Consider this before viewing Viking Warriors. The names of some days of the week are based on those of Norse gods, such as Odin, Thor, and Freya. How else have the Vikings affected your culture? As you watch the program, take note of how Viking life, religion, and shipbuilding influenced Eastern Europe and Russia. Assignment Discovery now presents Viking Warriors. Historical records reveal that in the year 793 AD, Europe was attacked by bands of pagan warriors. They had come from the north, across the sea, in search of treasure. When they arrived, they plundered peaceful villages and attacked innocent villagers. These warriors worshipped Thor and Odin, and fiery dragons decorated their warships. For Christian Europe, the blackest hour of the Dark Ages was about to strike. Between the years 800 and 1100, the sight of a Viking longship made the people of Europe tremble, for it carried a fearsome crew the greatest sailors of their day, and the fiercest warriors. The word Viking means men of the inlet. By late in the eighth century, these Scandinavian men were unrivaled as boat builders, a craft that would change history. Whether 60 feet long or 120, the keel of a Viking warship was carved from the trunk of a single oak tree. With a broad hull and a shallow draft, such ships penetrated far upriver and could be beached almost anywhere. Water, usually a barrier that kept enemies at bay, became for the Vikings a highway to invasion. To these warriors, each vessel was a creature unto itself. They gave them names like Long Serpent and raven of the wind. Overlapping planks of oak or pine were nailed, pinned, or lashed to the hull. The planks were caulked with tarred animal hair. In rough seas or rainstorms, the ships remained watertight. Under sail, these ships could make 10 knots, about 11.5 miles per hour. Against the swift longship, there was no defense for the Vikings had mastered not only the element of water, but of surprise. From the lands now called Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, young men sought their fortune at sea. Some went in peace to settle new lands, some went to trade, some to plunder. In their sagas, Norse poets recorded and embellished the exploits of these seafaring warriors. Men like Leif Erikson, Eric the Red, Ivar the Boneless, Olaf the Stout, and an especially cruel Viking named Egil Skallagrimsson, whose exploits have been recounted for a thousand years. Egil's father was from Norway, but having backed the wrong side in a dispute, he had been forced to flee to Iceland. There was plenty of driftwood to be had, so Egil's father built and ran a farm from which his men went out fishing, seal hunting, and collecting the eggs of wild fowl. Egil was born around 900 AD and raised in a small village. The village consisted of a few small huts and longhouses. With his family, he lived in one or two windowless rooms. The air was hazy with smoke. The walls were blackened with soot. Egil was by no means a weak or malnourished child, because his father was a successful warrior 
and was able to feed him meat and plenty of good foods. By the time he was three years old, he was as big and strong as a boy of six or seven years. Like other boys, he played at war and watched in awe as his elder brothers and his father went off each spring to adventures Egil could only imagine and envy. In Egil's time, Christianity had not yet spread up the fjords of the Norse lands. The Vikings still worshipped pagan gods. Thor rode with the thunder in the sky, and Freya brought fertility to the land. The names of these Viking gods would later be immortalized in our vocabulary as days of the week. Thursday comes from Thor's day. Friday from Freya's day. Wednesday is named for Odin, the god of war, who shielded Viking warriors as they charged into battle. A Viking who died in battle joined the fallen heroes before him in Valhalla, a feasting hall of the other world. His destiny already ordained, Egil spent his childhood wrestling, dueling, and hunting, perfecting the makings of a real Viking. He impatiently awaited the first sign of spring and the chance to go to sea in a longship and go raiding. In spring, they started preparing a big longship, and as soon as everyone was ready, they set sail. The skill of every warrior would be tested anew in the months at sea. Young Egil himself embarked on voyages that would change his life. Before long, Egil had risen to command his own ship. One day, Egil and his comrades landed near a large estuary that lay beneath a vast area of forest. They decided to go ashore and divide into groups each of them 12 strong. The men took up their weapons and headed inland. Egil carried an iron sword more than three feet long called Adder. It was light enough to carry in one hand, but strong enough that it would not shatter against a shield. Like most Vikings, Egil prized this weapon above all others. Some swords were thought magical, or bestowed by Odin, god of war. While Egil walked through the forest with his 12 men, they spotted a rich settlement, so they approached. Upon reaching it, they charged into the unguarded building. The slumbering inhabitants were thrown from their homes, and their possessions were stolen. Each of Egil's crewmen gathered his own load of goods, after they took all that they could carry, they returned to the sea. Egil's ship continued on its trail of terror. Late in the summer, they sailed for Denmark to lie in wait for trading vessels and plunder wherever they could. For Egil, the spoils of battle were plenty, silver, gold, and slaves. But rather than savoring his plunder, he was lured back to sea by the thrill of the raid. For this race of warriors, death came early through disease or battle. Warriors were buried with their weapons and perhaps a prized horse. Each warrior's grave would be outlined by stones in the shape of a longship, the vessel that would carry him to the other world, Valhalla. The greatest warriors received the highest honor of all, a boat burial. Provisioned with riches for the journey to Valhalla. But some Viking raiders, having amassed great wealth, chose not to fight, but trade. Treasure and slaves could be bartered for Mediterranean wines, Eastern spices, and Persian leather. As traders and seafarers, the Vikings left their mark throughout Europe. Russia 
owes its name to Norse traders called Rus. By AD 900, Vikings, also known as Norsemen, or men from the north, settled in a small region in northern France called Normandy. Settlements abroad grew. Vikings brought their families from across the sea and founded towns as far apart as Kiev in Russia and Dublin in Ireland. Having crossed the Atlantic 500 years before Columbus, Vikings are believed to be the first Europeans to have reached the New World. The old Viking way of life did not survive. Old victims had grown strong, and old enemies had become friends. The Norsemen in Normandy, even the Rus in Russia, would become strangers to men like Egil. By the 12th century, Christian Europe had quietly converted this race of pagan warriors. With the passing of the Vikings, no more would dragons be seen flying through the sky. Watching discussion topics and activity and resources for Viking warriors are up next on Assignment Discovery. Now that you've seen Viking warriors, talk about this. The Vikings were expert shipbuilders and sailors. Discuss possible factors that encouraged the Vikings to use the sea as their highway for invading foreign lands. Speculate on how the Vikings were able to master the element of surprise that made their raids successful. Now try this. Write a short story detailing your journey aboard a Viking longship. Describe the towns you visit, the people you meet, the languages you hear, and the goods you trade along the way. For videos, CD-ROMs, lesson plans, and teacher resources on this topic and more, log on to discoveryschool.com. To learn more, Assignment Discovery suggests what life was like when long ships sailed, edited by Denise Dursen. 